Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mining Now Product Promo. I'm your host, Jared Downey, and we today have Exxon Technologies, Rafi Jabrian, VP of Commercial Sales and Business Development at Exxon. Sir, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Jared. Uh, first time, first time on the show. Uh, have you uh, have you got to do the the podcast experience yet, or is this the first? Uh, I've actually done it a couple of podcasts, um, never on video. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, but uh, this is the first time with you guys, and it's a pretty snazzy setup. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and it's it's, it's fun being live event. You kind of get the kind of get the energy to feed off of. Um, tell me, tell me about Exxon, just for you know people that just don't know. It. We're gonna dig into some some details later, but just that overall. Sure, the company is. sure. So Exxon was founded in 2014, so I guess uh, going on quite a ways now. But we really got into the mining space in 2018, uh, primarily an autonomy company that specializes in mapping. Um, and we're a spinoff of University of Pennsylvania. So it's a oh. U.S. based company and uh, very, very interesting tech that sort of uh, made its way into mining. What was the origins of the company then? So, uh, again, it was actually from the labs of University of Pennsylvania, and they basically had built autonomy. So it wasn't anything specific. So it wasn't designed for the mining space originally. It was autonomy that was uh that that basically was modular and could go on to any different type of vehicle with a little bit of tweaking so then we got into the mining space shortly after that and um it really really took off from there so i think originally what the engineers meant for it was just to build autonomy and have things do things on their own mm. as opposed to having that human intervention i'm gonna ask a really layman question how does it all work actually let's stick with the mining space yeah. First conversation, second conversation, actually making an order, integrating it. What does it actually look like? Yeah, it's a fantastic question, actually. Uh, I'm not layman at all because uh, when you look at it, it's quite simple. However, the technology behind it is quite in-depth. And the way that our technology works is revolutionary in the sense that it doesn't need any sort of uh, previous infrastructure. So it is autonomy in its full sense. It doesn't need any Wi-Fi. It doesn't need any tethering. And generally the way it works is somebody will call us up and say, we've seen your product. It looks really cool. We don't know how it works. Um, and then it's a matter of just getting a demo because once we do a demonstration for them, the product generally does sell itself. Um, the big thing that we sort of... Um, pride ourselves on is getting people out of harm's way. So mm -hmm. this is originally a safety tool. Um, and yeah, like originally designed as a safety tool. Th that's, that's how, that's how it sort of came into play because we okay. thought that we would be able to get people out of harm's way and do the same things that they're able to do, just do it uh, much more efficiently, mm -hmm. safely, uh, with much better accuracy. Um, and, you know, you talk to any mining executive or miner underground and you say how important is safety to you? And it's probably the most important thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that's probably how it took off. And so, uh, OK, going back to the the integrate or, or the adoption process, then let's give some examples. Actually, maybe if, if you could just a couple of examples of actual equipment, machinery. That, that you're integrated and what that actually looks like on the machines. Sure. So, I mean, what we're pr predominantly known for are drones. So we're able to go in and basically provide a drone and put our piece of autonomy on it. Okay. And at that point, we're able to go and map stopes and we're able to basically go to places where humans should never go. And mm. nowadays, obviously, with the laws, they're not able to go and basically bring out the maps in real time for these folks. Um, but they're, you know, we're not limited to drones, so you could actually integrate it on quadrupeds and things of the sort, but drones are predominantly what is selling in the marketplace right now, because again, drones are still able to go where humans can't go and or shouldn't go. Yeah. We're able to do things much quicker. We're able to do things much more accurately. Um, and again, again, the big thing is safety. And if I could just touch on that, the biggest thing with our safety piece is that we're able to now get people away from one of the most dangerous places. So you talk to most miners at stope mining and right at the face is where it's quite dangerous because yeah. that's when you have potential rock falls and fall of ground and things of the sort. So we no longer need to have people there. With our drone, you're able to put people 50 meters behind under fully supported ground under the mesh, and you could run your mission from there. Furthermore, 
you're able to do it in three, four minutes, mm -hmm. whereas historically this process would take two to three hours, if not four hours, mm. with two people underground. So wow. we're able to just basically completely take that risk out of it for our miners underground, which is what we want. You know, I sit in these interviews and you, you kind of just end up in a flow. And then sometimes I forget to ask the question um, is, what is everybody else asking? What is the pain point? Uh, we've got, we've, I mean, we feature incredible technology on the show all the time. But there's these pain points that people have, not the problem they're solving, but when they're trying to talk to you, what holds them back from adopting it? Where is that thing that you need to sort of educate them on to, so that they understand where or where it can't work? Fantastic question. And uh, as advanced as technology is, um, unfortunately, we still have some people in position of power who are not quick enough to adopt technology. Now, that's changed a lot as well. I have to be quite honest. Uh, I worked for a mining company for well over 10 years, and at that point, it was much more difficult. Now we're seeing CEOs and COOs and CFOs coming in and saying, oh, no, we have to adopt this tech. But as far as where uh, the pain point is, it's change management. Anytime you're trying to get a new product mm. in and anytime you're trying to get something into people's um, process flows, it's getting buy-in from all levels. So sometimes the C-suite says, oh, yeah, this makes sense. And, you know, we see the return on investment. This is well worth it. But then the people underground are like, we don't want to learn a new technology. Yeah, you, doing you always forever. think of change management as starting from the top, but sometimes the top wants it. And then you have the people going, oh, I know how to do this job. I, you know. You're going you're gonna to disrupt my whole life. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and especially, I mean, if you have people who've been doing it the same way for 25 right. years underground. And they're good at it. They're, they're fantastic yeah. at it. They're comfortable with it. Yeah. Now you want to teach them a completely new trade. Um, so they're still a surveyor, let's say, but now they're using this drone. Um, yeah. But, but again, on the flip side of that, well, the exciting part is because we have this type of technology in mining now, we're able to bring in a whole new younger generation of yeah. people who didn't want to work underground before. Right. Now they're like, oh, I get to fly drones underground. You're, you're, you're talking about such a good point. If I was starting my career and I was maybe going to go into the mining space, if you told me, oh, I'm going somewhere that's dangerous, I'd go, I don't want that job. Right. I'll take a job for half the money. Like, I've got a family. I, no interest in it. But you tell me you get to use this technology, the safety, but you're also at like the cutting edge. I'm listening. Yeah. And, yeah. and I get paid well. They're like, good jobs. That's you right. know, all of a sudden now it's interesting, right? Yeah. And, and you're a pioneer. I yeah. mean, you're one of the first, let's say, generation of people to use drones in underground. That's right. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you, you talked about, you know, that sort of change management. Where, how did you get involved? You said you were working with a mining company before? Yeah. So I worked for Dundee Precious Metals um, for quite a long time, and I was lucky enough to work for them globally. So I spent some time at one of their mines in Armenia. I spent some time at one of their smelters in Africa. I spent some time with one of their mines in Bulgaria, which I'll actually be flying to on Monday. Nice. But uh, interestingly enough, I was working at corporate uh, uh, running their uh, digital innovation and uh, my boss, who is uh, a fantastic mentor of my boss at the time, basically said, hey, there's this technology. Let's have a look at it. And we were at an event in Toronto and the group of young engineers came up to us and said, hey, we have this drone and you can map autonomously underground. And I immediately scoffed. I said, there's no chance. What you're saying does not exist. They're like, we want to show you. We want to come out to your mine in Bulgaria. I said, listen, why don't you prove it locally? It's, let's go to a mine in Sudbury. <laughs> and I'll give a plug to NORCAT here because NORCAT was fantastic. We filmed underground at their facility before. At NORCAT? With, uh, with Rogers. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So our technology is all there. Um, and we have an office at NORCAT. So oh, nice. And actually has an office at NORCAT. Um, so we took the Exxon team out there at the time. And it was four or five young engineers. And the, the product at that time, I should say, was a minimum viable product. It right. was not what it is today. And they basically showed us that this thing works, um, you know, to a certain extent. And then after that, we were able to go out to Bulgaria. And when we tested it out there and develop, developed it further, the team in Bulgaria, and again, kudos to Dundee Precious Metals, because now it's already six years that they're using it. Mm. Um, we ended up buying a bunch of units from them. So, yes, I am uh, one of Exxon's first customers, if not their first customer. Mm. 
And then shortly thereafter, I loved the technology so much that I decided to actually join the team. Uh, just just before we wrap up, I want I was also curious how has it evolved? You you mentioned when it was first like kind of barely viable. Uh, now you're sort of scaled up. Oh yeah. Eleven years later, what what does that look like now? The, the product is ready off the shelf. I mean, somebody could actually just call us and order it. We can ship it to them. We can train them remotely from the other side of the world. Uh, we're deployed at over a hundred sites around the world right now. We work with all the major mining companies that you could think of, but the product is just ready to use out of the box. You mm-hmm. take it, you plug it, you play, and you're good to go. That's why the change management is the the sticking point, not the it, the it's plug not and play. A is, any yeah. longer. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like them buying a loader or a, or a jumbo or anything it's it's another mining tool that you have underground which basically just gives you a great return on investment and keeps your people safe yeah rafi thank you for being on the show this is a product promo so it's it's, it's short and sweet but we actually covered quite a bit of ground um i hope we do it again um you know maybe next time it's one of those full ones where we dig in and show case studies and bring up charts there's all kinds of stuff we can do uh but it was good to just get an intro to the audience so thank you for doing it i uh, hope we do it again thanks man thanks thank for you. your time and thank you everybody for watching uh you can go to i'm going to make sure i get the words x in technologies uh you will we'll have a link to their website um as long as raf is okay with it we'll put a link to your linkedin as well most definitely so you can connect directly with him if you're watching on linkedin you can just uh you'll see him tagged there you can also follow x in on uh their linkedin page they've got a youtube channel go check all those out make sure to subscribe to mining now thank you everybody for watching mining now product promo